Show. You're watching the Average Show Sports Talk at Chief of Lake Gaston at 4th Street. Let's go, Titan. All right, everybody, welcome into the Coach Ali Smith Show, um, filmed live here at Chick-fil-A at 4th Street. Um, coach, last week you guys played on Thursday. Um, out of curiosity as a coach, do you like those Thursday night games or do you find those a hindrance because they're kind of a little bit out of your rhythm? Well, I, I personally, it, it just depends on what, what time or type of year you're having. Uh, they've been good for us in the past, and then uh, sometimes they hadn't been good for us. It, it's short as a week. But coming off of a bye week, I thought it was good for us to get back to play. But um, the, the outcome wasn't like uh, we wanted, but it was pretty good then. Um, yeah, talk about that game a little bit. I mean, James Clemens is a very, very tough team. I mean, that's a, uh, I mean, a very daunting task if you played them at home, but then you had to go on the road in a Thursday night. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I would never take anything away from James Clemens. Uh, uh, they, they have a really good uh, football team. Uh, Coach Walter does a great job with them. they got a great staff. However, uh, that, for us, a lot of that was self-inflicted. You know, we we didn't uh, we didn't come ready to play. Uh, we didn't compete, um, and, and that's not just on the players; it's on the coaches as well. We weren't ready to play football, and uh, I don't think the uh, score indicated what type of team we actually have. I agree with that. Uh, it seemed like you know when the game started, the first snap of the game, you know, they jumped, then you hit that. That first down, uh, the market said that first down on the out route, yes. and then the bad snap, and then after that, it just seemed like kind of man, shell shock. Man, I'm telling you, once that happened, and I think um, in all my years of coaching, I've been on some some wopsided losses, uh, some wopsided uh, wins, but uh, uh, that right there was probably the first time I've ever been involved with a game where we snap a football and hit the receiver <laughs> in the head with the ball. I, I'm like, that's something that you see on bloopers. I've never been a part of anything like that, but it uh, uh, it definitely it went it sent us in a uh, downward spiral from there. Yeah, I and noticed we that. Did not bounce back from it, and we just went. The kids just went bananas, and they they want to win, and and they they practicing their tails off, and, and that just right there it just they they, they got we got to overcome things like that though. Um, in games like that, like you just talked about, you've been on both sides of that. You've been on the winning side, and unfortunately on the losing side this week. Talk about what you find out about the players that really want to be there in game situations. Oh, like you that. you find out true character. You know, I've I've said this since I've been playing sports that you can tell the true character of a kid or athlete when he get tired and things are going wrong. You know, they everybody's good when it's going well. Everybody's good when they're fresh. But you figure out the, uh, the those uh, real dogs once uh, the full quarter hit and things really get to going rough for you. You look back and you know who's standing with you and who's gone and ran. Uh, so it's almost like a street fight. You know, you get out the car ready to box and somebody you look around and everybody struck out and ran. That's it. Yeah, so, yeah, you, you have know. to stand in there by yourself. Yeah, exactly. At, at this point in the season, what have you been most pleased with? What's some of the positives you've well, got the, 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 the thing is, the, uh, the positives that I've been pleased with is the guys of the not quitting our guys. You know, we hadn't played very good football, but we hadn't had guys to, to just duck out the back door and, and our kids are trying. You know, that, that's the one thing that I'm pleased with. They they don't always do everything right, but they're trying to do the, the right thing. You know, we got back uh, after midnight on Thursday, uh, the kids who came to school, and then on Thursday uh, for our team meeting, they were all there. Um, and and they, they, they were there and they, they were attentive. So, you know, that's been a positive and stuff. So, you know, they, they trying to do the right thing. They want to they wanna do what's right. Uh, when you took over this job, something you talked about in the offseason, I actually took notes on this. Three things that really stuck out in my mind. Number one was buying in from the players. Yes. Number two was community support. Yes. People getting behind it. And number three is people realize that this is a, a process. It's oh, not yes. going to happen overnight. Oh, no. How do you feel about that at this oh, point? At this point, you know, I, I, tell, I tell our kids, I'm adamant, and I tell our kids this. I, I, I stood in front of them on Monday and I said, I just need to know one thing, are you guys okay? And as long as the kids are okay, we're going to be fine. And what I would hope that our community of 30,000 people in the Gaston with one high school, and I say this all the time, I would hope to get behind our kids and don't judge them off of wins and losses, support them because they're the kids. You know, you can talk about coaches all the time. You know, we get in this business and we understand what, what that goes with coaching. 
you know that, that and you have to be a big boy to coach uh, athletics, regardless of what level it is or what, whatever. But until so that goes with it, people pay their money to speak and this. But if you truly support the kids of your community, you're supposed to be behind them, win, lose, or draw. So, and you know, when you, if you, so that's the thing that I want our community and want them to understand when we talk about supporting them, not just at the high school, support them at the uh, in the ninth grade, support them at the middle schools, and and, and do a better job than that. And that's what gas and that's where we got to get better at you know I, I talk about you know our parking uh, you know uh, situation I tell our kids this I'll be quite frankly with anybody that will listen you know we, we should not have to look for people to work parking and sure. those are the things like that so you know and I tell I tell our kids I don't want to hear people talking about they want to win and want to be the other program and be a top program when you, everybody's not doing their part and you know yeah. this night just because we're 0 and 6 this is the stuff I've been saying since I spoke with you back in the Absolutely. springtime that everybody has a role and you need to play your role and support the kids and you know let the, the, I tell the parents this let the coaches coach the players play and the parents support and the community support and, and everything else will take care of itself if That's you want to be a top program but yes. if we want to just have a football team we can you know do the bickering and, and stuff like that in short term though the unity man that's yes. what i'm getting from you, man yes. i like that i actually like that a whole lot great answer uh now in this process and you mentioned middle school kids and we well, even below the middle school kids maybe some kids is playing in youth right now what's some of the things you would tell them what's some of the main things you would tell some of those guys to have the self-discipline and things you need them to be ready for when they get to you. Well, the big thing is what we got to do in our Pee Wee programs and our middle school programs, we got to get our kids to understanding and competing. We got to get our kids understanding that they have to practice. Uh, they they got to be at practice. Uh, I've heard the, the cliche of Gaston is, is a daddy ball, and I don't understand that, but, you know, my son's on the team, and if it was daddy ball, he would start, and he probably hadn't played, but two or three snaps the whole season. So, you know, I'm the biggest daddy of the all right now, and I hold the key to that. So uh, that, that's been hilarious. But when I see our, our youth leagues, and you know, we, we have so many youth leagues in the city, I don't even know which way to start. And that's something that we've got to address where our kids are all playing together and competing at a high level start now at, at the youth league so we can compete at a high level on on Friday nights you know our, our kids don't get to play I'm not calling names or anything they, they have to play at a high level you yeah. know the people we play gonna play on Saturdays and some of them gonna play on Sundays eventually yeah. and our kids got to understand that they don't get to just go and just outrun people outside on the outside <laughs> yes. that's true uh, let's change let's change gears a little bit and talk about Florence for a minute um, I know they have a very dynamic quarterback. They were actually, a lot of people favored them to win the region coming into this season. Yes. Very, very tough opponent coming up. What have you seen from Florence that stuck out to you? A very good team. They, uh, uh, the, the quarterback, they play him at receiver as well. He's a dominant player. Last year, he was a, uh, uh, they had jumped out on us and, and he was playing quarterback and then for some yes. reason they moved him to receiver yep. and it played off in our favor. So hopefully they'll do it again. Uh, <laughs> but uh, our kids understand they, they've been in, in tune this week. Uh, we had a rough day on Tuesday but today was a good uh, uh, day and uh, uh, they understand we got to tackle a lot better than what we've been tackling we got to line up and we got to take care of the football and we got to quit gift wrapping things to people everything we've done this year if you watch video it's been self-inflicted wounds you know every freaking ball game has been self-inflicted last ball Thursday yes. and so it, it's you know not taking anything away from anyone that we played but I tell I use a little saying to our kids we're, we're driving the car and we're just jumping out of it and running ourselves over. We, we, we got to quit running ourselves over and let's play football and get lined up and, and play football and, and do what we're supposed to offensively, defensively, and in special teams. We got to quit killing ourselves. Um, one more thing. Going forward, rest of the remainder of the season, what's the number one thing you want to see out of your guys particularly? I want to see our kids compete. I want them to see them be a discipline. I want them to stand understanding how to play football. I want them to stand understanding the game of football. We work situations every every day. We um, at, at some point we want to, we are teaching our guys how to play football, and and I want to see them bring what they're learning on on the practice film and in the film room. I want to see them execute it on Friday nights, and, and that's what I want to see. I want our our guys work their tails off every day. They in the weight room. They watch film our kids spend a lot of time at that school and I want them to see them execute because we have some really good football players and I want people to see them uh, perform at the at, at the level that they are, are capable of performing and, and, and just that's why I want them to finish as strong as they can awesome
Coach, we will see you back here next Wednesday. Thank you for sitting in with us. Yes, sir. Appreciate you.